Welcome to the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zonos. It's getting pretty cold outside. It's October. Cold fronts coming in all over the United States. And I'm sure some of you where you are, it is very cold. Where I'm at, it's only about 50-something degrees. However, there were cold locker rooms across the country this weekend in college football. What do I mean by that? Now, Halloween is right around the corner. Two weeks away, to be exact. Friday the 13th was just this past Friday. And Clemson, they had a bit of a fright night. We're upset by Syracuse 27-24 in the Carrier Dome. This ended a 12-game win streak for the Tigers going into the bye. And if you watch that game, I watched the bits, bits and pieces of it. They were never really into it. They weren't enthusiastic about playing on TV on a Friday night. Prime time. We used to love doing that in high school. What happened, Clemson? And Kelly Bryant comes out there. He was already ginger with the ankle. Then he comes out there and gets hurt with a concussion. Knocked out of the game. Then they bring in the young kid, Looper who obviously could not do anything on offense. And that defensive line, the Power Rangers, the mighty Morphin Power Rangers, they more, look more like little Einsteins, Clemson's D-line did. So hopefully they get to that, that stuff ironed out over the weekend, over the bye week, because they play Georgia Tech coming back. But right now, Clemson's on the outside looking in at number seven in the recent poll. So Clemson, get well soon. Kelly Bryant. And hopefully you guys come back and can do something to get yourself back in the playoff picture. Because right now, it looks like Miami, if they went, went out and run the table, will be playing in the college football playoff out of that ACC conference. Now, another upset that I noticed on Friday night that everybody saw, and we weren't really shocked over. I know I was. And Washington State got busted by Cal, the wildfire game, as I should call it, because there was a question about whether or not they should even play this game, considering all the Northern California wildfires that had been taking place in that region. They lost 37-3. to Now, Mike Leach, you give great speeches after the game, sarcastic speeches after the game. You, you said a couple weeks ago after you guys beat, I want to say, USC, oh, we should have beat them worse than we did. Well, you scored three points against a Cal offense that could barely put up a touchdown against the Washington um, defense. So... For you to come out there and average almost 400 yards a game before this game, prior to the Cal game last Friday, and then get busted like that, 37-3, to about 34 points, lets me know that your team was never for real to begin with. And you guys will not snip the college playoff, and you're probably okay with that because you're happy to have a job after those Texas Tech days when you were accused of intimidating players, putting them in closets. Um, so, Mike Leach, uh, that team... Decent team. You guys are probably getting a nice little bowl game, but the playoff was never going to come to fruition for Washington State. Now, he's not going to follow the AD to Nebraska. Of course, the athletic director for Washington State just got the job and accepted it to go to Nebraska, which I don't think he should go to Nebraska because Mike Lee strikes me as the type of guy who wants to be in a comfortable envir environment and chill and sit back and really just take in the Northwestern air, which is what he's doing in Washington State. So, he has job security, and Mike Leach is happy to be back in college football, and I don't think he leaves that campus anytime soon. And this team, for me, they were a bunch of pretenders. Moving along, now LSU and Coach O, they tamed the Tigers from Auburn. Big win for the Tigers down in Baton Rouge this past weekend. And Baker Mayfield cooks up another win against the Longhorns in the Red River rivalry. Also... Another upset where a coach was talking about how you guys don't see us. We're on TV late nights. You guys are on date nights. You're not up to watch us on the late night. Pack 12 after dark. Washington and Chris Peterson, sit down. Be humble. <laughs> now, they lost to Arizona State 13-7 on Saturday, and I was kind of surprised because this Arizona State team under Todd Graham, they've never really been that good to me. Yeah, they score some points here and there on the late night games, and they're exciting to watch, but they always, for some reason, ended up losing. Manny Wilkins, this quarterback, great dual threat quarterback, can run a little bit, pass a little bit, but I'm accustomed to seeing him throw a lot of interceptions. Well, the other night, played the game of his life against Washington, did not throw a pick. Oh my gosh. And he was 29 for 41, 245 yards passing. So, Manny Wilkins, good game. And you held Washington to seven points there, Arizona State? Hmm, I'm impressed. But Washington, that playoff journey that you did last year, it will not resemble this year's end of the season result because you guys are out of it. The top 10 now sits Alabama number one, Penn State number two. They should be there. They'll probably beat up on Michigan this weekend because Michigan looked bad against Indiana, and their, their quarterback situation is poop. And Georgia, they're number three. I think they're the second-best team in the country. They're complete. Nick Chubb is healthy. The kid Fromm is a baller. 
TCU got a lot of defense. They're at number four. Number five, Wisconsin. They're sneaking around in there somewhere. Ohio State, number six. Number seven is Clemson. Of course, they're going to fall. Number eight, Miami. Number nine, Oklahoma. They're back in it. Number 10, Oklahoma State. Now, that 9-10 matchup, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, that sets up a gargantuous competition when they play and meet in Bedlam. That rivalry is always a classic game. But just considering it will be a de facto playoff game, I'm looking forward to watching that game. So stay on tap for Bedlam, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, because that will be a playoff game in itself, as will the SEC Championship when Georgia meets Alabama. Now, in the NFL, Big Ben, you back, bro? You back? <laughs> Steelers beat the Chiefs, knocked the Chiefs off from the ranks of the unbeaten. Uh, the Chiefs were, I want to say, the last remaining undefeated team. So shout out to Pittsburgh Steelers for winning that game. Killer Bees left the hive this weekend. Big Ben, a 17 for 25, 252 yards. Le'Veon Bell, 32 carries, 179 yards. Antonio Brown, eight receptions, 155 yards, and one TD and a touchdown dance. The Steelers look like they're back rolling. So shout out to the boys in Pittsburgh. Adrian Peterson found the juice. He wasn't getting carries he wanted in New Orleans, yelling at Sean Payton on Monday night. Then he shows up in Arizona this past weekend and has 26 carries, 134 yards, two TDs versus the Bucks. even though Jameis Winston got hurt. But AP, I see you're in the offense you like. Maybe Arizona's woken back, awoken. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald at receiver and AP in the backfield. I really, really think Arizona could be a contender in the NFC. We shall see. The NFC West, that is. Now, you still got the Rams and the Seahawks to deal with, but can they climb out of the darkness like Al Pacino. Can they climb back into the light like, like he said in any given Sunday? Now, oh my gosh, did you say the Giants beat the Broncos? Yeah, they did. Well, they beat them on a Sunday night game. Trevor Simeon, eh, he looked okay. That defense was a little shaky, but they played fairly well. It was just Janoris Jenkins, the jackrabbit, taking a pick six back to the crib. I guess one in five if you're in New York is better than 0 and 6, right? <laughs> so shout out to the Giants as well. They finally got their first win. <laughs> Big story. Green Bay lost their commander-in-chief Aaron Rodgers this weekend, and everybody in the world knows that the Packers season is over. Now, it's no secret that I'm a quiet Packers supporter. However, just looking at the spectrum of this, a broken collarbone by Anthony Barr, that's probably going to sideline Aaron Rodgers for the rest of the year. People who are holding out saying that we could potentially see him come back later on, no, he broke his collarbone on his throwing shoulder. And when you pay a guy like Aaron Rodgers as much as you pay him, and he means as much as to your, fr to your franchise as he does, you're not just going to put him back out there just because you want to maybe win some games and salvage some games at the end of the season. If I'm the Packers, I go ahead I fold it up and come back next year. Brett Hundley, he's he's a young quarterback. It's his third year in the league out of UCLA. He's a dual threat. He can run a little bit. I think he could maybe use, use his legs like Aaron Rodgers used his legs in this offense. He had three picks Sunday, though. Um, but who do you call right now? You're going to call the Ghostbusters? No. You're going to call Tony Romo? Well, if you call Tony Romo, you're going you're gonna to end up with either his back or your heart broken. So why well, call him? And of course, nobody wants to call Colin Kaepernick for other reasons uh, that are unforeseen that nobody likes to mention. But of course, they're not going to call him. So the Packers QB situation, according to Mike McCarthy, they're keeping it in the room. It's either Brett Hundley or the other guys they have on the roster. So we shall see what happens with Green Bay. Uh, with this this defense reeling as far as the secondary goes and all the injuries they have to Quentin Rollins and a couple of those other guys, I don't know how the season will end up for Green Bay, but hopefully they salvage something from this season and can muster up some type of success and maybe be a wild card team because I don't see them winning this division without Aaron Rodgers. Now, Major League Baseball, the Yankees trailing the Astros in the ALCS 2-1. to one. As of last night, they play again today at 5 o'clock. Now, hitting will be the Yankees' ally because it was 2-1 first game, 2-1 second game, and then they bust open last night, 8-1. The Yankees win, and Aaron Judge hits a home run, second home run of the postseason. Finally, Aaron Judge, finally you're doing what we saw in a home run derby. Finally, you're the same guy from the first half of the season. So, Aaron Judge, if he can continue to be a source of offense, I think that the Yankees can potentially beat the Astros because when it comes to pitching... Houston has the edge, and Houston's got to continue to pitch well so they can go ahead and see the Dodgers in that World Series. I know I said Indians and Dodgers early, but yeah, I really think that it'll be Astros and Dodgers because the Dodgers, they're up 2-0 over the Cubs in the NLCS, and Chicago, they got to find some offense. Scored one run last game, two runs in game one. 
Uh, the Dodgers are scoring easily for, what, five runs a game, I want to say? So what can the Cubs do? Bryant, Rizzo, Schwarber, John Jay. I'm calling on all you guys to pull out the bats. You guys got to hit the ball. Hayward, where are you guys at? You guys got to hit the Addison. Russell, where are you guys at? Step up to the plate. Get some type of offense generated from that, uh, excuse me, from the hitter's box. And do something because you're not going to beat the Astros with with guys like Justin Turner, Cody Bellinger. They've got hitters. Y'all see a Puig hustling around, getting the quick, easy triples off of a off of a, a down the line ball. So you guys have to find a way to hit the ball if you expect to repeat Chicago Cubs. You celebrated all year. You barely made the playoffs. Now you have to deliver if you want to be a back to back champion. Now, running over to NCAA hoops, and I couldn't wait to talk about this this morning. Rick Pitino was giving me official acts yesterday by the University of Louisville. Now, this comes after the Adidas scandal where, allegedly, Adidas was funneling players to colleges and universities through third-party funders who were paying these players and their families to go to the uni- specific universities. UofL was caught up by the FBI. Rick Pitino effectively pushed out of, out of his job on paid administrative leave. Tom Jurich, the athletic director, pushed out on his job on paid administrative leave. Now, he was officially Rick Pitino given the axe yesterday. Now, I must say, there's a lot of alum, a lot of Louisville Cardinal fans that are upset about Rick Pitino no longer being the coach. But how can you be upset about someone who was managing to commit institutional pimping? Now, What do I mean by institutional pimping? This kid, Brian Bowen, he will never, ever play college hoops again in his entire life. Now, he may have a shot to go overseas or maybe he wants to wait a year and and play in the NBA next year. But the institutional pimping that took place by Rick Pitino paying for his, well, excuse me, I'm not going to say that he paid for it. I can't say that. But the University of Louisville or whoever, someone was paying for his family to live in the Galt House. This, man, this young man was also paid $100,000 cash, 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 cash money to come to the University of Louisville in the first place. Now, if you look at the different contract breakdowns between what Ramsey wrote up for Tom Jurich as well as Rick Pitino, Tom Jurich, two company cars. Why do you need two company cars? Well, of course, he needs one for himself, one for his wife. Rick Pitino with getting uh, $1.5 million of the Adidas deal that Louisville was getting. That was 98% of the deal. So... You've got that, and then also in their contracts, they have it structured to where Louisville, the university, would be paying the taxes on their salaries. So that 200K, 300K, 400K, 500K, 600K, whatever's on that bottom line, they get in full because the university pays their taxes. The university's paying your taxes, you're getting most of the shoe deal, and then on top of that, you get company cars, and then on top of that, you get all the prize recruits through third party funding. But you say you didn't know about it, but one of your recruits got 100000 and his family's living in the Galt House, the nicest, nicest hotel in the city of Louisville, and we're supposed to believe you didn't know about it. I can't feel sorry for this man. Because at the end of the day, you're exploiting young athletes' amateurism to your benefit, putting it below your pockets, Rick Patino. So, good job. Coaching for the University of Louisville, but they don't need you anymore. They need something fresh. Because what you did was essentially institutional pimping. And I'll leave it there and move right along. Hope Louisville gets well soon. Good luck to the basketball team this season. Because David Padgett, I think he's a fine guy. I think he was a good, hardworking player for the University of Louisville under Rick Patino, And I think he can maybe make a difference this year. Now... And shout out to Lance Thomas from Norcross, Georgia. He's a baller. Now, opening night in the NBA is tonight. Celtics versus the Cavs on TNT. Ooh-wee, Kyrie, come back to the city where you say they're not sports fans. I bet they're going to give you a boo, boo. I can't wait to watch Cleveland versus the Celtics tonight in Cleveland, in the queue. It's going to be loud and rowdy. Kyrie Irving coming back to face the king, the forbidden son, the long lost prince, returns home to take on the king. I love the storyline behind this. I think the video tribute that the Cavs are doing is very admirable because Kyrie is the sole reason you won that championship in game seven against Golden State in 2016 because he shot the shot over Chef Curry. It wasn't LeBron. Yeah, LeBron had the block before, but who hit the shot? It was Kyrie. So I look forward to watching this game. It'll be a good one. 
Now, also, you got Rockets versus Warriors after that game. This would be a Wild West shootout. James Harden, CP3, Trevor Ariza, Luke Imba Umbamute, and Nene. And you got Chef Curry with the pot, Clay Thompson with the shot. Then you got your boy KD. And I look forward to seeing this crew. Oh, J Draymond Green. I'm not going to leave Draymond out. Of course, he's part of the Fantastic Four out there. The Ocean View Boys, the Ocean Front Boys, the Splash Brethren, <laughs> I should say. So, Golden State, they obviously are the best team in the league this year. And I think they blow the Rockets out tonight first game. I just don't think the Rockets have, have had enough time to jail yet. And I saw Chris Paul bump his knee a couple uh, last week, and they tried to act like he wasn't hurt, and he tried to go to the locker room and walk normal. But I know that's why he didn't play the last, se last preseason game. But we shall see what he does. Now, I'm looking forward to Lonzo Ball's game against the Clippers here in a couple nights on the 19th. Get ready. That's two days from now. I'm looking forward. Lonzo Ball, what you going to do? Are you showtime or not? Show me. Show me. But the NBA season is upon us, folks, and we got a lot of good basketball to look forward to. Make sure you stay up with Zono Sports. I love bringing the juice to you all. Thank you so much for watching the Zono Sports Show. And don't forget where you know Zono's.